Hey, I hope it is going great. In this video, you will learn about serialization. Specifically, we will discuss the different formats, their pros and cons, and the security pitfalls to look out for when using them. The first method of serialization we are going to talk about is pickling. For this, we use the pickle module, which comes with Python. As you can see from this little example, we import pickle. Then we call pickle.dumps, which is very similar to what you might do with JSON. And we pass it a dictionary. In this case, it has the key of foo and the value of bar. And as you can see, it then turns the Python object, in this case a dictionary, into bytes. And if we then call pickle.loads, it takes in the bytes and then returns back a Python dictionary. So it works in both ways, of course, because we need to serialize it first and then deserialize it. Thanks, Gabri. Now, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of pickling? So some of the pros are um, pickling works out of the box in Python. So you don't have to uh, import anything or, uh, you know, uh, install anything. It's good for good, uh, simple prototyping purposes. And the second thing is it's very efficient. Uh, any Python object, be it a list, dictionary, or even a class that you have created can be serialized into a pickle format and then deserialized. And when you serialize it into a pickle format, it is in binary. So it is very compact, it is very efficient, and it requires not many bytes. This sounds like pickling is ideal, but it's having its own problems. And that's what we cover in the cons. It's not really recommended that you use pickling for uh, uh, getting your user input. What I mean by that is you should really not unpickle anything that you get as a pickled object from outside your trusted environment. It could be something that your user uploaded or it could be something that they have inputted into your uh, forms. Uh, in other words, it's pretty risky. We'll come to that why, uh, what are the potential security holes, uh, but we really do not recommend it for production. The other problem with pickling is that uh, you cannot use it with any other programming language. It just works on Python. If you pickle something uh, uh, as a Python object, you would really need uh, another Python interpreter to unpickle it or uh, deserialize it. Just so that we know uh, how dangerous pickling is, we have tried to show you a simple piece of code that can be tried from your end as well to show how pickle can be used for even potentially dangerous operations like uh, creating a sh uh, running a shell command. So in this piece of code, you can see that we import pickle. We just load a binary, uh, a sequence of binary uh, bytes. Uh, in this case, it's readable. Uh, you can see that you're making a system call for LS, which is a list directory in Unix. And uh, it just does that. You know, when you uh, when pickle deserializes a pickled object, it can allow arbitrary system execution. So it is always dangerous to pick up something which you have got as a pickled object and run it. I could have just replaced ls with any other system command and the output would have happened or if it was uh, dangerous or something which can cause destructive side effects, all those destructive side effects would have happened because pickle does not really check against all those kind of attacks. So the pickle module says that you cannot use it for untrusted or unauthenticated sources. We strongly recommend that you don't use pickle in such cases. YAML is another popular uh, serialization and deserialization format. And a lot of people uh, have heard that YAML is pretty effective and it's a good uh, format for using, uh, for storing your settings, etc. We also know that YAML is a superset of JSON, so many people consider it to be as secure, uh, but it's not the case. YAML has problems of its own, as you can see in this simple uh, code example that once again, that we show you that uh, how dangerous YAML could be. Um, as you can see, it's a one line uh, file, which is called test.yaml. It just contains double exclamation mark and Python and then a system call again. Now, what happens if you uh, uh, run this or if you try to deserialize this YAML file using the built-in 
YAML module. So if you say from, uh, or sorry, uh, it's the PyYAML module that you have to install is not built in to uh, Python. Uh, so if you install PyYAML, you can import uh, the load uh, function. The load function uh, can be, uh, a proper, you can pass a file handler into that load function. And notice what happens when you load it. So as soon as you load it, the system ls root has been executed and the output is shown. So this is potentially showing that uh, potentially any system call or any system function can be done, just like we showed for pickle. And uh, YAML is pretty dangerous in that respect um, when you use uh, it for loading any arbitrary YAML file. Now, does this mean that there is no uh, solution for this? In fact, PyYAML has a solution for this. Uh, you can see that warning at the bottom, which says that do not use uh, yaml.load. It's not safe. Uh, instead, you should use yaml.safe underscore load. So uh, it's definitely, definitely uh, strongly recommended that you should use yaml.safe underscore load if you have to use YAML. Uh, there, some of these decisions are not within our control, right? You might be forced to read some YAML files for some processing or some purpose uh, that you did not decide. So in those cases, uh, we'd recommend you to use uh, the safe underscore load function or whatever corresponding uh, safe loading function is there in your favorite uh, YAML library. Which brings us to the third uh, and uh, arguably one of the most popular serialization formats, which is JSON, uh, originally from the JavaScript world, uh, but pretty similar um, because the way in which we write uh, arrays and strings in uh, JavaScript is quite compatible or similar in Python as well. So uh, we feel that uh, JSON is popular because it's, pretty limited in, in the kind of expression, uh, in, in the kind of types that you can express in JSON, right? Uh, JSON allows you to uh, represent or encode Unicode strings or strings, in other words, integers, floats, none types, booleans, lists, and dictionaries. So this is the full list of uh, types that, uh, Python types that you can encode. You cannot encode a Python class, for example, uh, or, uh, a module so a lot of uh, rest, uh, this makes it a lot more safer because it is a lot more restricted and unless you do something uh, really silly like um, you know calling eval on a json object which uh, might give you what data is contained in that but definitely not recommended you should use uh, the uh, deserializer provided as a built-in part of python i think it's simple json uh, and uh, or any of the other JSON modules that you might use, and you you're pretty safe from arbitrary system execution. Like we said earlier, uh, JSON is a subset of YAML, but it's a safer subset. And uh, instead of using the YAML serializer or deserializer, I would recommend that you would use the JSON one in case you have to use it. XML is pretty popular. XML is used for serialization and deserialization as well. And a lot of us assume that it's uh, pretty safe. It's pretty uh, uh, commonly used in enterprise environments. It has been around for a while. So uh, what could be the security problems with XML? Well, in fact, uh, it's having problems of its own. The code you see on the screen uh, is actually called a billion laughs attack. Uh, if you, uh, so uh, let me take you through this code very quickly. So you can see that uh, there is a string, uh, a multi-line string called uh, XML, which is nothing but an XML document. Uh, and if you go all the way down to the end of the triple quotes, you just have two lines, uh, which is using the built-in uh, element XML.e tree element tree uh, to parse uh, this uh, XML document from the string. What, I, what happens when you run this piece of code is it's not really destructive uh, in the sense that it doesn't uh, uh, destroy anything or steal your password uh, or anything like that. Or, uh, 
but it does something else uh, which is a little more interesting in terms of an, uh, a certain kind of attack essentially it just eats up your memory how does it do that uh, the last line in your xml document uh, in this xml document is uh, lols uh, an entity called lol9 and lol9 is defined as 10 lol 8s and lol8 is defined as 10 lol 7s and so on and so forth until lol1 which is defined as 10 lol8 uh, lols what happens in this case is each step uh, it's uh, expanding by a power of 10 the actual length of lol9 is 10 to the power of 9 characters which is basically a gigabyte so uh, if you have uh, a three character string like lol uh, it will be three gigabytes of pure string now um, this is this might not sound like a lot but in python uh, a string is not represented as the exact number of characters it contains right we have something called boxing we have something called unicode encoding which uh, makes uh, each character pretty uh, expensive so sometimes a character might be saved as uh, four uh, four characters or four bytes in a 64 bit string uh, sorry 64 bit machine and uh, because of boxing uh, a string might be saved with additional bytes so uh, what actually happens is a lot more than 3 gigabytes sometimes um, it 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 expands to uh, 9 gigabytes or even much more than what your physical memory contains and if you uh, uh, what happened when I executed my uh, this string? Uh, this string is it. Uh, my system ran out of memory on my laptop, right? And you get that error message that you are seeing on the right hand side. So uh, this is one way in which attackers might try to uh, deny service for other users, right? If your server runs out of memory, all your other users might experience slowdowns, or they might feel that the service has become uh, unresponsive and uh, it can take down your entire system uh, by this particular attack you can see that uh, almost all the uh, module xml modules which use uh, xml parsing within python are vulnerable to billion laughs so you, you can see that billion laughs the quadratic blow up all those entity related uh, vulnerabilities uh, you should watch out for so uh, essentially when you're using xml uh, you should uh, be very careful. You should not uh, trust any uh, externally created or uh, user created XML unless you have safeguards in place, uh, uh, without which you should not simply use the built in XML parsing modules, is basically what I'm trying to say here. We have two major formats uh, JSON and XML from what we have discussed so far. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of these formats? So JSON is very easy to understand and very easy to write. Uh, you don't have to uh, write a, a starting XML preamble or the longer XML tags. Uh, if you want to create an array, all you have to do is create a start with a square bracket, just write the array and close the square bracket. So it's easier to read, easier to write. It's much more friendly for a programmer the second biggest advantage and i think the main reason why json became popular is that it is easily compatible with javascript uh, your server side uh, code can talk to your client side code because the client side code can uh, uh, execute javascript in most cases it's already there on your browsers and the client side can prepare a javascript a json um, a string and pass it on to your server side and at your server side if it is Django it might be uh, uh, easy to uh, use your JSON libraries and read off what your JavaScript code has prepared now to uh, talk about what is disadvantages about uh, JSON uh, it is possible that you know some people will try to evaluate a JSON document to uh, get what is uh, inside it uh, some beginners do this in javascript some beginners do this in python but like i said it's a beginner's mistake most of the time if you want to uh, deserialize a json document you should use a json library and you should uh, you know uh, parse that using json libraries alone
what are the advantages of XML? So if you prepare an XML document, you can always uh, check whether it is a well-formed XML by comparing it or checking it against uh, a schema. For instance, uh, if you have an XML document uh, for representing a person's details and you always expect that a person's phone number should be there, you can always create a schema which says that there should be uh, a second uh, field which says uh, phone number and there should be a phone number which should not be a blank, uh, uh, which should not be a blank string. Uh, you would notice that this is not easily possible using JSON because it does not have a standard like XML schema for defining what kind of documents are valid and invalid. And an XML standard is much more complete. Uh, you will find XML standards for almost every use case that you can imagine from creating schemas to creating uh, uh, digital signatures or uh, XML standard itself is more verbose than JSON. JSON is a pretty small standard. You can easily understand it. Uh, in, in, in one page and that makes XML much more versatile and you can use it in a lot more domains. Let's take a look at binary formats, one of which we already talked about, which is the picker module and other ones include Thrift, Protocol Buffers, Message Pack and Bison. And all of them are good for optimization, but they do not offer better security. That's very important to understand. Just because they are binary formats doesn't mean that they are more secure in case it's only a bit cryptic, but still you can deserialize it if you want to. So in that sense, they are still, of course, secure, but not more secure than the other options. Let's talk about a couple of security lessons we can extract from everything we've learned until now. The first one is never trust user input. This is so fundamental and most problems can be avoided by just following this principle. In general, we should never trust data that comes from a user or therefore the client entirely. For example, when using HTML5 and forms, most modern browsers implement some sort of front-end data validation, but this can very easily be omitted by just simply right-clicking and changing the input type, and therefore we can still send everything we want to the backend. Therefore, make sure that everything is validated on your backend side, and again, never trust user input or therefore anything that the client does. The second one is that we should not rely upon security by obscurity. Security by obscurity means that we try to make our system secure by simply, as you can see from this image, metaphorically putting everything under the ocean, which means we try to hide our flaws. Obscurity can be an effective layer to put on top of your existing solid security, but again, it should not be relied upon and there are always ways to omit it or find out where the attacker wants to go, and therefore it does not replace having solid security in place. Thanks for watching the video. To find out more about Arun and his book, make sure to check out the links in the description. If you found the video useful, don't hesitate to drop a like and share it around. We'll see you inside of the next episode. Take care and cheers.